Now we're going to be talking about how to recognize and avoid fraudulent emails. And I want to say that a big reason why I created this training at all was because a lot of the trainings and guides and, you know, here's the things that you should do to protect yourself online. None of them seem to mention uh, how to recognize these kinds of emails. And I think there's this, uh, you know, myth out there that, you know, a lot of times hacking is something that gets done to you and there's nothing that you can do to prevent it. Um, but actually a lot of times what happens is, you know, tricking you is a lot easier, less expensive uh, to do than hacking. And so why would someone uh, spend all of this time and money and energy and resources into hacking into your system if they can just trick you into handing over the keys, right? So I, I want to say, you know, right up front, nobody legitimate is ever going to ask you for your password. If someone is asking for your password, then they are lying to you. Um, you know, a common trick is someone from IT, uh, claiming to be from IT, I should say, uh, calling to tell you that they need to fix a problem with your account. And, you know, it's usually vague and unspecified, and it's it's also just a, a total lie. Um, a lot of times in, in early chat programs, uh, they would have to put a, a warning at the, the bottom of each screen that said, uh, employees will never ask for your password. And they had to do that because it was a very common scam that people would pretend to be employees of that chat program and say, oh, there's a problem with your account and we need your password. Um, and, you know, you, you of course want to fix the problem with your account, right? Except they just tricked you into giving away your, your password. So I want to talk about some of the, the broad categories of scam emails. There's many kinds of scam emails out there. Here are just a few. Um, there, there's one that was, you know, very, uh, you know, common for, for a long time, uh, called the Nigerian Prince scam. Um, the, the idea was like, you know, out of the, the blue, you know, you'd get this email, um, from, from someone saying that they had so much money, you know, often they said that they were a Nigerian Prince and all you had to do was give them your bank account number and then they would route some money to you um, because they, they had too much. And um, of, of course, that's a, a total scam. Um, and once they had your bank account number, they would take money from you. Um, there's another scam where uh, you, you get an email saying that you have this sudden inheritance from a long lost relative that you've never heard of. And you know, it, this is great, right? All you need to do is just pay inheritance tax on your newfound riches first, and then they'll route you the rest of the money, right? And, and sure, it's like a couple thousand dollars, right? But who cares if you're going to be, you know, raking in millions, except it's a total scam, and you'll never get any money from that. Um, there's a, another scam that I've, I've seen to be pretty common on Facebook where um, someone claiming to be a relative, uh, sometimes even hacking the account of your relative, uh, says, oh, I'm traveling abroad and I got hurt and I need some help. Can you send me some money? Um, and the, the details of that are often spotty or, or, or missing, but that sense of urgency is is what gets you and and you know of of course in in many cases it's not even your relative that that was traveling right um but you know all of these are, are tricks right and then uh another category of email that uh I've, I've seen a lot is uh emails that claim to be from the u.s government they promise you things like an expedited green card or they say that there's a problem with your immigration status and that you need to send money to fix it. Uh, you know, the, these scams are almost always revolving around money. And I, I want you to be really skeptical because if it's too good to be true, it probably is. So, 
here I have a list of, or a big sampling of fraudulent emails that I've received. And these are a specific kind of fraudulent email called a phishing email. And really that's just like a, a jargon term for a, a type of email that tries to trick you into giving up your account information, right? Like your, your username and password to an account that you have. Let's, let's take a look at all of these. Notice how they're all trying to grab my attention. They all want me to open up the email. They all want me to click on the email. See that I have a, a gift card that I need to claim. I have a, a missed voicemail at 1.07 a.m. Uh, ooh, a response on my loan. And, oh, this one's scary. A child predator alert in my area. Uh, right, so there, there's a lot going on here. And, you know, think about how these emails are trying to trick you. Look at how many of them employ a sense of urgency or missed opportunity. Some of them make, try to make you curious or they appeal to fear. All of these emails, bottom line, they're trying to trick you. And let's say I opened up the email from this screen that promised a $100 Costco reward that I needed to claim. Now, if I opened up the email and I clicked through and I logged into my account, I would be giving away the password that, you know, my, my password to my Costco account, right? And my, my hackers could get in there. So, you know, I might be thinking that I would be getting my $100 Costco reward that I was owed, but instead I'd be giving away access to my Costco account. So just to reiterate, let's go back. These emails are trying to trick you and it won't be so obvious that these emails are fraudulent. Here's the thing. When we're looking at it in this presentation where it's, you know, when we're focusing on security and we see like a couple dozen emails that are all fake side by side, it's really easy to say, oh yeah, that, that looks like a fake email. Um, but if you're only getting one email at a time and maybe you're not thinking about it in the context of security, your guard might be down. So it's really important to always be thinking about security and, and to keep that level of skepticism very high. So I want to say that if you can tell that it's a fraudulent email without opening it up, delete it without opening. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to show you how to recognize those emails and verify them before you open, before you click. So first off, verify the sender. And how we, we're going to do that is we are going to hover over the sender's name. So I hover over Starbucks here. And when I do, this little window comes up that says uh, Starbucks, and then it tells me the email address of uh, Starbucks. Now, if this were a legitimate email, I would expect that this would come from starbucks.com. I think it's really, really suspicious that it comes from marthing.xyz. Don't go to that website. I'm sure it's, you know, a total scam, right? But that right away is just a, a big red flag. Like, what's going on here? Um, keep in mind that fraudulent emails and the people who send them, they will often use very slight misspellings or spellings that are just a letter off, things that might look close enough if you're not reading closely or if you're going too quickly or if you have impaired vision. So I know that this email is fake and I should not open it. I should just delete it. Next up, uh, let's say you did accidentally open up an email, um, that a fraudulent email. We still have time to figure out that it's fake. So here in numbers one, two, and three, I've highlighted three things that we should check for. Number one, again, is the return address that we should check, um, that we checked in the previous slide. 
In this case, we see that the return address is nullmark.click rather than walmart.com, as we might expect if this were legitimate. Remember that they'll often rely on close misspellings. And I, I do want to take a, a real, real quick second to say that just because it, it, if, even if it did say walmart.com, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's legitimate. It is possible to fake it and make it say walmart.com. So don't rely on the sender's address being correct as being like, oh, this is totally a legitimate email. It is one sign that it is more likely to be a legitimate email, but it's not perfect. it is theoretically possible to, to uh, fake where that email comes from. Okay, moving on to number two. If we hover over the link, don't click, just hover over that link in number two, uh, the status bar at the bottom of our screen, as we see in number three, that's going to show us where that link would take us to before we actually go there. And I want you to get in the habit of hovering over links and then checking that status bar to see where they go before you click. Now, in number three, that we, we can see that the, this email has used a link shortener that prevents us from figuring out where that link would actually go. Now, if this link were legit, I would expect it to go to walmart.com. So, one caveat I want to say about that is sometimes legitimate email marketers will use long confusing links that are difficult to figure out where they go. And in that case, make sure that you really, really, really trust that email before you click. But maybe a better way to do it is let's say I wasn't sure if I really did, like this email is telling me, have a Walmart reward waiting to be redeemed. Instead of clicking a link in this email, a better solution would be going to the Walmart website directly and checking my account there. So let's review. Be skeptical because they, the, the people sending these emails, they're trying to trick you. So verify the sender's email and hover over links to find out where they go before you click. And if you think an email is fraudulent, you'll want to delete it. I do want to caution you that if you're checking email on your phone, it's very difficult to verify that sender. and You can't really hover over the link to see where it's going first. So use extra caution when checking email on your phone. And maybe it's a good idea to verify uh, when you're on your computer. This is kind of a good transition into something else we should watch out for are these text messages that are fraudulent. So here we, we see that jargon word phishing uh, with the a PH. Uh, and really that, that's just like a, a jargon term meaning this is an attempt to steal your account information, right? Your username and your password. So this text message says for security reasons, you know, we, we need you to sign into your account. Uh, right, sounds scary, right? So got this text from this unrecognized number asking me to sign in to verify my account. Got to click on this link and open it. But this isn't a legitimate way of verifying any account. So instead of clicking the link here, if, if you thought mm, maybe this is legitimate but I'm not sure, you could go to your account's website directly. But don't click that link. So this email looks really urgent, right? Uh, it looks like I need to change my password right away. Uh, someone just used my password to sign into my Google account. What do I do? Well, you would want to verify the sender's address. You'd want to verify the link that the change password button goes to. And you would not want to click on it because this was the exact email that was sent to staff at the DNC. And because someone clicked and entered in their password, hackers were able to gain access to their whole email account. And when you're in an office setting, 
like, for instance, at the DNC, it's not just your own personal emails that are at risk. It's all of the emails that get sent to everyone on staff. It's everyone that you've corresponded with, right? So, you know, it, it's a really big risk for, for offices. Really want to make sure that you're, you're taking uh, these threats seriously because this one actually looks really sophisticated, right? Like this looks really close to, to you know, what a Google alert might look like, what we might expect it to look like. Now, I do want to say that Google is not going to warn you this way, right? They have other ways of warning you uh, that you should change your password. Uh, but if you do set up two-factor authentication like we talked about in previous slides, then you're going to be in better shape. Let's say you did click through, however, it would look just like Google's web page. You probably wouldn't be able to tell. So think about all of the sensitive information in your email, everyone you've ever communicated with, thinking that your conversations were private, all, all kinds of addresses and phone numbers, all of your contacts, where you are, where you've been, what you've bought, everything. So be very careful, be very skeptical about these kinds of emails. And if you're not sure, verify, verify, verify. And if you're still not sure, go directly to your account by that website, not from that email. So if I were concerned that someone did have my Google password, what I would do is instead of clicking that link, I would go directly to my Google account settings.